Today on Mid-Missouri Art News, we have artists Lorraine McFarland and Megan Rosewell. Welcome to JCTV Mid-Missouri Art News, supported by many art enthusiasts uh, now worldwide, thanks to our uh, YouTube uh, format, what have you. It's coming to you live, almost live, in fact, from the capital city of Jefferson City, Missouri. I'm your host, Rick J, and uh, I have two special guests I've been excited to bring to you today, uh, artist Lorraine McFarland of Rolla, Missouri, a member and featured artist today, uh, JCAC, 115-year-old uh, Jefferson City Art Club here in uh, Jefferson City, plus a textile sculpture and Japanese Ikebana instructor, Megan Roswell uh, of uh, Sedalia, Missouri, both playing a large role in the state of Missouri and other states' uh, art circles. I now turn, if you will, join me, and turn to artist Lorraine McFarland of Rolla, Missouri, uh, and welcome her to JCTV Mid-Missouri Art News. Uh, welcome, Lorraine, uh, to Mid-Missouri Art News. Thanks, Rick. I'm happy to be here. Excellent. Lorraine, if I may call you by your first name, um, uh, would you like to share with us uh, what best description, background, what have you, of uh, Lorraine McFarland? Sure, Rick. I am uh, primarily a pastel artist. These are my weapons of mass construction, I call them. Excellent. Um, they're actually soft pastels, not oil pastels, and that's what I work with primarily. Um, I grew up in St. Louis, and my dad was an artist, and he was very talented, but he was limited by economics and the I responsibilities see. of family obligations, so sure. his art kind of took a back seat. Um, we didn't have a great relationship, but I do remember when I was a little girl, about nine years old, he started painting a mural on the living room wall, oh. and I sat on a stool next to him, and I was totally fasc fascinated by oh. that. I can imagine. And um, we connected that way, even though we didn't have a lot of connection otherwise, so that was nice. And he taught me basic drawing skills and how to use a grid. And I think that was really the first major event in my life that kind of set me on a path to becoming an artist eventually. Uh, I took all the art courses that were available to me in high school. And I was introduced by my uh, intro to art teacher in high school to the Impressionists. And they uh -huh. made, the Impressionists made a huge impression on me. I see. And I really got excited. And that was when the spark got ignited in me, I think. Excellent, excellent. Uh -huh. So I went to college as an art major. And despite, despite the fact that my father told me I didn't have to have inborn talent, I could learn to be a good artist. I saw what the other students could do in my intro to art class, and I got scared away. I see, wow. Mm. Well, I decided that I needed to, I kind of followed in his footsteps. I decided I needed to have a job. So uh -huh. I quit art so that uh -huh. I would be financially stable, and yes. I, I put the art on the back burner, just like my dad did. I see. Uh -huh. And I kind of let the spark die out. Sure. Um, so fast forward to um, 1997, and I was married, and my mother-in-law, Bertha, 
became unable to take care of herself because she had Alzheimer's disease. Oh, and so mm -hmm. uh, my husband and I made the difficult decision and the scary decision to sure. have me quit my job and uh -huh. take care of her full time in our home. Uh -huh. And even though that was scary and financially a, a burden for us, it was uh -huh. one of the best decisions that I ever made <laughs> because oh, uh -huh. After Bertha moved in with me, I had a lot of time on my hands when I was home with her. So uh, my dad's art supplies, had, I, which I had inherited, were in their hiding place in the basement gathering dust. Uh. And um, I decided to get those out. It was exciting because I can remember digging them out, that just uh. looking at them and looking through his drawings and, and some of the things that he had been working on when he passed away. Um, in fact, I even finished one of his paintings. I should have brought that one today. Uh. Uh, but anyway, um, yeah, it was very exciting because I had it in the back of my mind all of my life that I'd gone, that I would want, I wanted to go back to art. I just didn't know if it was going to happen. So it was, it was, it was fun, it was exciting, it made me very happy, and it relieved a lot of the stress of taking care of my mother-in-law. I can imagine. It's very therapeutic, we found, in, in a lot of arenas. Uh, I think that's a great story. That's very, uh, very touching. And, uh, so thanks for sharing. Uh, well, thank you. I, um, I started doing some drawing, and um, I showed those drawings to Dan Woodward, who I know you've had on your show. He's yes. one of my good friends, and um, I admired his work, and, and I asked him to take a look, and he said, you need to continue. So yes. uh -huh. he was very encouraging to me, and um, I started taking courses at the Votech. I took a watercolor course and some drawing courses, but when I took my first pastel course, um, Everything was downhill from there. Um, uh, you I, fell in love with the pastels. I did. I took a course with Teresa Emmett Allison, who is a very talented pastel artist from, from Rolla, Missouri. And um, I just kept working uh, throughout those years when I took care of my mother-in-law. She was with us for eight years. Uh, I see. And once she passed away, I started showing some of my work. And my very first painting that I showed, it won an honorable mention, and it sold. So I was very encouraging, very encouraged by that. And um, uh, then uh, 11 years later, I started working, uh, I started going to plein air comp competitions. Uh -huh. Plein air is going outside and painting from life like the Impressionists painted. Yes. And um, that really turned a corner. I really turned a corner because it made me learn to paint fast and kind of let go. Well, your artwork speaks well for us. It's so awesome, as we'll be sharing one piece behind you here. We'll be talking about that. So yeah, I think the... going up on the screen now is one of my plein air paintings, View to the Gravel Bar. Oh, oh excellent. Super great. Yes. Um, so, again, it's awesome, and I, you've, it just really inspires me to, to look at them. Uh, captivation, I guess you could call it. Um, well, do you have any projects at this moment you'd like to talk about? I know we want to throw them on the screen, and you're the best uh, person to describe these uh, paintings that mean so much to you, and I'm sure our viewers. Well, um, yeah, I do have some things coming up. Um, I am going to be working, I'm working currently on a, some pieces for the art show at the art house in Fulton called Mimic the Masters. Uh -huh. And um, that is a show where you choose one of your favorite master artists and you paint something similar or like yes. what they did. Thanks. And you have one of those, I think, coming on the screen. It's called Channeling Claude, my favorite impressionist, Claude Monet. Oh my, yes. Um, I yeah. have many plein air events coming up. I'll be teaching a workshop in the, at the Augusta plein air event, which is a real honor for me because that's where I got my feet wet 11 years ago. That was the first plein air event I went to. And um, now, 11 years later, they're asking me to teach a workshop. And that's Ooh. happening at April 27th in Augusta, Missouri. Uh, Thank you. Uh, and I have um, a really exciting thing coming up in March. I've been chosen to be the artist of residency in 
for Texas A&M University biology department. Oh my. And what in my honor. previous life, one of the careers that I chose when I dropped my art major was biology, and I became a field biologist. So I'll be combining two of my passions. Um, the university is going to take me on a boat to an island in the Laguna Madre, and oh I'm going to stay there for a week and paint by myself. What an opportunity. Yeah, Can I so go? that's going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> Can I go watch? <laughs> pack, and put, pack you in my backpack. Yes. <laughs> Uh, what else? I've got a workshop coming up in um, June at Stone Soup Galleries. That's June 1st and 2nd. Stone Soup Galleries is in Chesterfield Mall in St. Louis, Missouri. Oh, yes, uh -huh. And um, those are the main things that I'm working on right now. Excellent, excellent. And uh, we'll be, uh, each painting as you've described, we'll definitely will you be looking at them. Well, you're currently the featured artist for six weeks on the JCAC website, and uh, you've opted not to show at the run uh, the uh, DMV, and uh, we do have someone scheduled to fill those walls, and we appreciate you, uh, you know, representing the Jefferson City Art Club today. So what's, what's their next the big um, program or exhibit that uh, the next have. exhibit I'm a brand new member so I don't know uh, a lot of the stuff that's happening but what I am interested in myself and will be hopefully submitting a piece for is the adult fine art exhibit that's going to be at the Capitol Arts Gallery April May April 6th through May 6th and, check and that's in. Check Pardon in. me. Is there a check-in date? Uh, uh, deadline to enter is March 30th. March 30th. Yes, Thank and you. that's mm -hmm. tied in with the Capital Arts Arts Around the Town. Aha. Uh -huh. oh, yes, I'm quite familiar. Thank you. All right. Uh, well, you know, I've invited also. I just got word from uh, the Runch Nature Conservation Center uh, uh, in Jefferson City, and uh, again, we'll be having the call for nature's art in 2020 through the months of May and June. Everyone that has been on the show since the October 19th of 2016 and those current, like Lorraine and my next guest, Megan, are invited to show. So put that on your calendar, May and June of 2020. Well, thank you so much, Lorraine. Uh, basically running out, of, running out of time. So do you have any closing words you'd like to share with our viewers? Well, if I could just mention a word or two about this painting behind me, mm -hmm. um, I, I've been a member of the Gateway Pastel Society artists, oh. um, Gateway Pastel Artists, which is a chapter of the International Association of Pastel Societies My. for over 10 years now. And I think I've entered their uh, annual show at least eight times. One of my goals when I got back into my art and I joined GPA was to um, win Best in Show oh my, yes. in the Gateway Pastel mm -hmm. Artists show, annual show. And uh, so a milestone for me came in 2017 Excellent. when I won Best in Show for this painting. Oh, this beautiful. is called beautiful. Brooks Williams Fret Monster. Uh, this is a famous uh, guitar player friend of mine who uh, was called by one of the guitar magazines a fret monster. And um, he, he's devoted to his guitar playing and that's his favorite guitar. So it features the guitar and his hands playing the guitar rather than his face. Yes. And an interesting story is that when he saw it, he said he wanted to put it on his next CD, but his people said no because his face wasn't showing. <laughs> oh my, well, I, I, I want to point out that we think of, a lot of people think of pastels uh, basically in portrait landscape, but this painting here is just unbelievable what Lorraine has done with these pastels. It looks like an oil painting and it's so moving uh, being a guitar player and he, the monster of the frets, moving the frets, uh, the finger work as you see. So that's an excellent piece and I congratulate Thank you, you on those honors. Now, do you have a website? Yes, on a commission uh, I do. basis, someone might want to get a hold sure. of you or a phone number, that yeah, email. Actually, sure. Yeah, I have a I have a website. My website is www.lorainemcfarlandart.com. My 
email is lorrainemcfarlandart at gmail.com. You can phone me at 573-578-1559. I have a Facebook page also. Okay. It's um, uh, facebook.com slash lorrainemcfarlandfineart. And I just want to say that um, I book workshops. I teach workshops. Any place anybody wants me to go to teach a workshop, I learn from my students. I'm inspired by my students. I, they, they help me to continue to do what I do. And um, I'm also happy to do commissions. I think you have uh, one of my dog portraits that you'll be putting yes. up on, mm -hmm. the, on the screen. I've, I've sent dog portraits to Alaska. Fantastic. And, um, mm. I do, you know, I'll, I'll paint any animal. Well, I want to thank you once again for sharing with us here on Mid-Missouri uh, Art News, uh, JCTV. Thank you. I've enjoyed being here. Thanks for having me. Yes, ma'am. Well, after the break, we meet Megan Rosewell of Sedalia, Missouri, and uh, who you will surely uh, inspire you uh, to some degree. And as we take a close look at a new shared skill here on Mid-Missouri Art News, the Japanese Ikebana, and more she has to share. Stay with us. Welcome back to JCTV's Spotlight on the Arts, Mid-Missouri Art News. Join me, please, if you will, in welcoming now uh, sculpture uh, artist Megan Rosewell of Sedalia, Missouri. Um, uh, we might even call that a textile installation person, and which we'll explain thoroughly here in a couple moments. Welcome, Ms. Rosewell. It's so Great to have you on the show, meeting first time at the Missouri State Fair in 2018. So I've been anxious to have you on the show. So welcome, uh, along with my uh, viewers, uh, to the show. Great to be here. Thanks. Super. Well, if I may call you uh, Megan by your first name, 15 minutes is really not long enough uh, to really share all that you have to cover uh, that makes up your art world uh, in explanation, what have you, and teaching us somewhat in new terms. We will try and cover the highlights of your skills and experiences. You come uh, to the round table basically as a textile installation person and instructor in the art of Ikebana. That's a Japanese term, which I'm familiar with, living in Japan for 18 months back in 66, 67. Uh, basically, the Japanese tradition of flower arranging. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so these skills are now new, as I said before, to Mid-Missouri Art News. Uh, so we're going to take it from there. Please share us a little bit about you and those highlights of your life that best describe Megan Rosewell. <laughs> Good to be here. Um, yeah, we moved to uh, Missouri about four years ago from northern Japan. And um, I, maybe to back up a little bit, I am kind of from Wyoming, uh, kind of from New York. And I went to school uh, for my undergrad in uh, Nebraska at Hastings College. And after school, um, I started uh, using my sewing skills that I learned in 4-H uh, to make fabric work while I was in college. And then after college, I, uh, I ended up moving to Japan. And so I lived in uh, like the wild west of Japan. <laughs> About the, up by the mountain? Up near Hokkaido. Yeah, in Aomori. Yes. I was uh, further south, oh. uh, uh, Kyushu. Oh, yeah. Uh, area. Mm -hmm. So um, 
up there, not a lot of people speak English, and there wasn't meant many art opportunities, so I kind of took my time to learn as much as I could about Japanese um, textile techniques and um, Japanese art in general. And I started um, learning to become a sensei in Japanese flower arranging uh -huh. because it fulfilled my love of flowers, and then it also gave me those wonderful sculptural qualities. Cause, uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> Great. So that's where you became inspired. And then where, what was your next step? The inspiration? Yeah, we came back. Um, we came back to uh, Missouri. And um, I wanted to take, because um, flowers are so ephemeral, they die really qu quickly. Uh -huh. And I wanted to take all that I had learned about Japanese art and ikebana, and I wanted to translate it into um, textile sculptures. And so now that I'm back where I can speak the language and I can do shows, um, I'm taking all those things that I learned and turning them into fabric sculptures. I was so inspired by the Japanese photography mm. on Kyushu Island, visiting Kumamoto and, and what have you, and Nagasaki. But just the art alone and their, and their, even their skills of the writing, but in their painting, it's so detailed. So that really inspired me in uh, trying to do my military obligation at the mm. same time, but I held on to that mm -hmm. and finally turned back to it after um, spending some time. Yeah. So uh, the, uh, the flower work, Ikebana, mm -hmm. uh, putting pieces together that you, you have here, uh, so much reminds me of there, even there, the, um, the trees, um, you know, everything's so delicate mm -hmm. when it comes mm -hmm. to the Japanese. And yeah. So, well, take us on down further the road then. So I like to I like to explore. Um, they they have a real wonderful understanding of negative space, and so like in my sculptures, I like to try and create space and to like purposefully move your eye around the piece. And with this embroidery piece I have right here. Um, Embroidery can be really flat, but I, I worked really hard to use the, um, the direction of my stitches and to use my color palette to try sure. and create a lot of three-dimensional space within the embroidery. Oh. And so, um, and then, of course, the fabric piece behind me, um, this was the piece called Convergence that I showed at the Missouri State Fair the summer of 2018. 2018. And um, this is only half the installation right here behind me. Um, but it was... Um, it was four panels that were three feet wide by 45 feet long, and we took them from the corners of the space, and they all the panels hung across the ceiling, and they flowed into the center, and then they dripped down from the ceiling in the center. And so, um, you know, they're playing with the movement of the eye and playing, you know, responding to the space and really yes. trying to and bring everything. And bringing everything in. Mm -hmm. So if you was at the State Fair last year, you walked in upstairs in the fine arts area, and that's the first thing you saw. Immediately, I was drawn to the piece because it reminded me of the festivals that I had witnessed and been a part of in Japan. Mm -hmm. So again, I said, this lady, she's got to have some history or something within this textile uh, uh, show. So we, uh, we basically kind of became one in the sense of the Japanese art. Uh, Much appreciation. It was a link. And so, and then uh, yeah. again, you brought it together, trying to bring the elements mm -hmm. that were on hand into that one empty big space of a room. All of a sudden, you was inspired to walk in and not only uh, be guided by this piece of uh, art, yeah. this uh, textile installation. So I, um, I this this installation was made out of 100% um, recycled materials. So this is all made from the lining fabrics of skirts, shirts, and dresses, and it's put together in kind of what Americans would call um, a patchwork quilt arrangement. Oh, yes. um, the tradition in Japan would be boro, or using mending, um, using scraps from other. Um, textile pieces. Uh, so I, me and my assistant, it took us, um, oh gosh, it took us like three or four months sitting down and just like surging every couple day for a couple hours to put this piece together. And so it was a real big undertaking, but I think it, it worked out really well in this space. And it's I'm a super piece it. and your embroidery work here. And we'll be <laughs> showing more of her artwork as we're speaking as we uh, get into the edit room and, and add some of those other 
pieces to share with you. So, uh, well, I guess I should say what skills, can I ask, what skills uh, define, uh, really go into rather than, well, I guess you have layout, just like an artist, you have your, your sewing, uh, what have you ever seen, any other yeah. elements that you would like to identify with in the Ikebana? Oh, Ikebana. Uh, um, you know, Ikebana is really, I think, I think it's, there's, a, there's a really great parallel between textile arts and um, Ikebana in that you use so much math and so much geometry. And you don't think about it. You don't think, I'm going to sit down and do math today. But what re you're really doing is you're, you're thinking about what angle you need to cut. You're thinking about how many, how, you know, half a centimeter or half an inch or a quarter an inch seam you have to sew. And um, so I use, I actually use a ton of math when yes. I'm developing a pattern to sew and then, you know, um, the angle of the flower and the rotation of the flower. So you're really working with how that flower grew in the wild and you're trying to take an um, you know you're trying to take nature from the outside and bring it in indoors and exactly. creating a little scene from from nature and so um, art is a lot of math and it's a lot of science and, too and it's basically <laughs> you're using a lot of geometry yep which we have a, uh, an artist on the program and, mm -hmm. and he looks at the uh, elements of ge geometry to really to define any piece that he paints, mm -hmm, uh, so mm -hmm. it, and that's the same thing in the layout of a, a project that anyone would do on, on a canvas or in this instance, um, or these two instance, instances. So that's really great to share, and we want young uh, artists to think about that. It's just not you may lay it out, but actually, and it comes together, but you're actually using those elements mm -hmm. uh, as we even see in nature. Uh, the um, creator seems to have designed his own palette uh, in many instances. So uh, I, I can identify with that and share that on you know, more of a technical aspect. <laughs> well, some of your um, uh, favorite completed projects, I, do you have uh, any uh, thing you'd like to share by title other than the, Oh, um, you know, I, I have, uh, I'm working on a big installation right now for Sedalia um, uh -huh. at the Liberty Center. I'm going to have a, a, a solo show, um, and so uh, one, a piece that I'm... I'm and what time, when would this, will this be able to be viewed by our uh, viewers? This, um, this show is going to be open for sure by March 21st. I think our opening is... 2019. Yep, 2019, um, March 21st, 2019, and uh, the show is going to be open until Mar April 21st is when I'm, oh, I'm going to take it down. Excellent. But yeah, so I'm, I'm working right now with working low. I've done a lot of work on the walls, and I've done, um, I had, I was in the Mid uh, Midwest Invitational down at Springfield Art Museum. Oh, I was one of the four artists I represented Missouri, and um, in that show I experimented a lot with, um, you know, installing on the, from the ceiling and you know creating oh, yes. pieces that hang on the wall and that hang on the ceiling so now I'm gonna I'm gonna go floor for a little bit Excellent. and well I'm, I'm really anxious to see <laughs> my website is meganroswell.com or um, and you can reach me um, on by email at Megan m-e-g-h-a-n at mad m-a-d m-e-g-h mad meg with the Mad H Meg. dot com. Excellent. Or you can find me at madmeg.com. I have both URLs. Mm -hmm. And you can find me at madmeg on Insta and on Facebook. Um, and, you know, I can, uh, I can do commission work for embroideries or commission, if you want to commission fiber sculpture, we can, we can work that out as well. Um, I teach uh, soft sculpture workshops and Ikebana workshops, but I don't have anything lined up just yet. So if you're interested in bringing one of those to a venue near you, Give excellent. me a holler. That would be excellent. Uh, I've tried. I've uh, taught at the Powell Gar I've taught Ikebana at Powell Gardens at the Kemper Art Museum. Um, oh, you wow. know, I just had a soft sculpture workshop at Missouri Valley College up excellent. in Marshall. Oh, wow. um, so, so you know, well I've, qualified. That's yeah. great. <laughs> well, Megan, we're just about out of time. So, mm -hmm. on behalf of JCTV Mid Missouri Art News, uh, which is attempting uh, to bring together all art level levers and enthusiasts in Missouri and the surrounding states through this program. I want to thank you so much for contributing to Missouri Art News and making it a learning and informational experience for all. Yeah.
Thank you so much. Do you have any me. closing comments for us? Keep making art. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you, JCTV producer Glory Enlow and crew. And, and thank you, our viewers, for uh, watching. It really means a lot to me and uh, others here at JCTV. So look for more Mid Missouri Art News right here at JCTV. And don't forget YouTube. <laughs> I'm Rick J. Singh. See you next time.